Welcome to today's episode. Picture a bustling airport with travelers moving in every direction. Now, imagine that everyday routine being interrupted by a sudden tragic event. Today, we want to bring to your attention a heartbreaking incident at one of Jamaica's busiest airports that has left many questioning the efficiency and preparedness of emergency responses. Audio Jungle Last Wednesday, Leroy Smith, a 71-year-old visitor from Florida, experienced a tragic collapse at Sangster International Airport in Montego Bay. What was supposed to be a routine check-in turned into a disaster, revealing serious concerns about how emergencies are handled at this major travel hub. As Mr. Smith collapsed at the baggage counter, Celia Foster, another passenger on his flight, rushed to his aid. Her account, now widely shared and discussed, paints a harrowing picture of the delays and missteps that occurred in those crucial moments. Here's an excerpt from Celia Foster's emotional recounting of the events. Her words bring to light the frustration and helplessness experienced during this tragic episode. The man stayed right there on the floor and died. The man died on the floor. He died. My God. Hi, everyone. This is not something that I normally do. As a matter of fact, I've never done it before. But I believe that there is a need to do this today. Um, I'm doing this. I'm live at um, this Sangsters International Airport um, on my way back home to America, um, taking flight JetBlue. So. We arrived at the airport just about um, 11 o'clock there. Um, a gentleman was behind me, one of the agents, speaking to another man. But I didn't pay them much attention, but I know they were talking. And then I just, hear, I just heard like somebody fell. I looked behind me, it was the, the, the passenger, an elderly man that fell. Blood was coming, I think, from his nose. And the, um, the agent who he was talk to, talking to, who had just stepped off for a little, just turned his back, turned around and, you know, took up his head and tried to clear his passages. And I was saying, somebody call 911 or 119, whatever the case is. Um, and I was saying to him, give him, C give him CPR. But he said, he said to me, he's breathing. He's breathing. And, and I forgot. He was breathing and you know doing a little bit, little bit of shuffling, a slight shuffling. So you know, um, when I saw a lot of blood coming from his head, I could have seen the wound, but the blood was on the floor at his head. So I went into his bag. I saw his passport. No, his I'm sorry, his passport was on the ground beside him. So I took it up, put it in his bag. I look at his bag and I saw, I saw his name, his the name tag on the bag so I um, you know I, I could say what his name was and then I was saying to the gentleman you know we were there conversing and I said somebody call him and she said she was checking his oxygen you know uh, in the meantime I took out his phone I got his phone and was searching his phone to see could find a number a recent number and we were making calls using our phone and because uh, we could have placed the calls on his phone and then the jet blue, the jet blue lady came and she took his phone and she went on the phone um, myself and her we were going through what to find a, a, a number that we think we could call so we, 
she called the number. While she was calling the number, um, another gentleman who came, I don't know who he represents, but he's with the airport. He's with the airport, he had on one of those vests. And he was saying, um, tell the, tell the, because we got through to the person on the phone, and the lady was telling him that, you know, the, the customer, I won't say his name, the, the, the passenger, he collapsed, you know, and he's at the airport. So she said she was trying to get somebody, you know. He was there you now telling her, telling us to tell him, or telling the jet lady to tell the person on the phone that um, the, the single, the single ambulance that is at Cornwall Regional is not available. And for them to call a private ambulance, the person on the phone has to approve the payment of 400 US dollars. They have to confirm that it's okay for them to call the ambulance and noting the payment of 400 US dollar. So I said, we have to wait for them to do that to get help for the man. The man need help. The man, I saw the man gap. I never see somebody gap or what they call it, catch breath in my entire life. First time I'm seeing that, right? And the man was gapping, right? And um, the man was saying, so I said, why do you need why you need to tell them that? Why, why you need to get $400? Or to confirm that then we pay $400 before you call that. You understand? So that is stupid. So the nurse was saying, if they can't get the ambulance, then they'll get the taxi. Mr. Miss, get the taxi. I'll pay the money for him. Listening to Celia's account, it's clear that the situation was mishandled. The focus and payment instead of immediate medical aid raises serious questions about the effectiveness of emergency response protocols at the airport. In response to this incident, Transport Minister Darrell Vaz has called for an immediate investigation. This move signals that the government is taking the matter seriously. Minister Vaz's acknowledgement of the viral video and the eyewitness account coupled with his request for a thorough investigation indicates this situation is being addressed at the highest level. Minister Vaz has requested specific details about the timelines involved to assess whether the response was acceptable. Depending on the findings, there could be significant changes in how emergency services are managed at the airport. This might include improving access to public ambulance or revisiting contractual obligations with private healthcare providers. I have seen and heard, seen the video and the report that was made that has gone viral. I've also seen and heard other messages from other passengers that were around. So the MBG airport has a contractual arrangement with Hospitem in relation to providing medical services, which include ambulances. My understanding when I asked is that they have access to up to seven ambulances and the proximity from Hospitem to Montego Bay airport is not that far. What is important for me is to see exactly the timelines. So I don't want to prejudge. I've gotten a preliminary report and I've seen the viral video, but I have requested specific information which will guide me in relation to the times and whether those times of response were acceptable. This tragic event underscores the urgent need for effective emergency response systems. As the investigation unfolds, we will keep you updated on any developments. Thank you for joining us today. If you have any thoughts or comments, we'd love to hear from you. Stay tuned for more updates and take care. Mr. Smith had an accident and we need our family to come back to the airport. I asked what's happening. The person said she was unable to give me much information over the phone at the time and that Mr. Smith had an accident. All she can tell that he had an accident and he is on the floor. She hung up and alerted the nephew who transported Mr. Smith to the airport. When she called back the representative, she heard 
he is still on the floor and he's unconscious and they are going to perform CPR. All right, so I said, where's and did you, do you have an ambulance to rush him to the hospital? She said, the ambulance is on the way. Distressed, she made repeated calls for some 20 to 35 minutes. Still, all I'm hearing is he's they're doing CPR and ambulance is on the way. And to the point where I'm like, are you telling me that there is nothing else that can be done? He's just on the floor like that? Approaching 40 minutes, she called again, eager for an update. The update left her perplexed. She said, I cannot get this close anything. We were doing CPR, they were doing CPR on him, and now they cover him up. Mr. Miss, what do you mean them cover him up? What that mean? Did he die? Sadly, he did. MBJ Airports Limited released a statement two days later saying the airport staff were alerted to a passenger in medical distress. It says emergency response protocols were immediately activated with on-site medical personnel arriving within minutes. The airport said during that time an ambulance was also called to the scene.